Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Morning Jumpstart. My name is Jason Meyer, and this week we're doing something a little bit different. Um, the first half of Morning Jumpstart, we're going to be doing some uh, gesture drawings, particularly of the head, neck, and shoulders. We want to figure out how to draw a twisted up, down. Where are we going? So that is what we are going to be doing today for the first half. And for the second half, we'll look at a couple of uh, student submissions and uh, we'll see if we can't find those gestures and things in those. So let's set our handy dandy little timer here. <clears throat> and we can see what kind of trouble we'll get into. So every time we seem to think we've got it figured out we don't necessarily have it figured out so i thought i had everything figured out this morning and i didn't necessarily have it all figured out so we're going to go forward with confidence and uh if that confidence falters for some technical reason uh stick with me we'll get it figured out All right, Jenny. Good morning, Jenny. Good to see you. And Miss Cindy's there, making sure, making sure everything is stable. Stable on the table. <laughs> okay, so let's take a hyper leap. Oh, what do you know? There we go. So what you're going to see is obviously a photograph, and we're going to run through different photographs. And then that gray square you see at the top left, that's going to be where I do my gestures. Okay? I'm going to be unable to mark on the photograph with how this is set up. But we covered all of this in class yesterday. Um, we went through it again last night on Masterworks. So, and if you don't familiar with it, uh, stick around for just a minute and you should probably be able to figure it out in the first sketch or two. So has everybody got some pencil and paper ready to go? All right, well Millie's busting in trying to get going. Let us go. So do you see the pinch? Remember we talked about the pinch? One of the ways we can help see that sometimes, if it's not real obvious, is which shoulder is the chin closest to? Right? And see if the pitch isn't there. So what I see See that chin is leaning something like that. And the pinch is on this side, so let's go up and over. Let's go around the back of the head. And then if this is the center of the chin, where's the pit of the neck? I'm seeing it there. So again, the chin will go up and around. Okay, then with the T, indicating the nose or the center of the face, and with the brow ridge, that will also give us a lot of information. How can that give us a lot of information? Well, for one thing, the brow ridge should be about the middle. And if it's above that, if it's above that, that indicates that the person is looking up. If we show the brow ridge below that, that would indicate that the person is looking down. So above, well, you can't see me, so I can't demonstrate, but hopefully that makes sense. 
So again, a ton of information we want to get from these very simple marks. Okay, and then if we come to the pit of the neck and we look at the chin, which shoulder is higher? Well, our front shoulder. Well, well is it out here or is it right here? So we want to think of, okay, the chin runs across. So how much further down and out is this lead shoulder? That looks a little much to me. Is that a little more practical? Something like that. So again, this is it's just a com a constant compare, relate, compare, relate, compare, relate. But we don't want to show all of our work And where is this going to go? Well, this tells us that the back of the skull is back here somewhere. And those are, remember, that's going to hook up. So that gives you a hint about that. And then how does that other shoulder relate running through the pit of the neck? It's down. Okay, I hope that makes sense. How did you guys do? We'll speed up, but I want to go slow at first so you have a chance to get these. You have a chance to get them. All right, Susan made it. Good morning, Susan. Good morning. Okay, so let's go on to our next one. That will require... Here we go. Let's see if we can't get you a... That's a pretty good shot. All right. Okay, so let's find this, the chin. Right? And if we want, if, if it helps, you can start with the tilt of the face, like from the chin through the nose. And there's not much tilt here, is there? And then where is the stretch and where is the pinch? Remember where, which shoulder is the chin closer to. And put your body in that position. And see what hap where does the pinch happen on your neck? And where's the stretch? or the bunch up. Sometimes when you twist, there can be a bunching and a stretching. Where does the bunching happen? Where does the stretching happen? Well, I think the chin is closer to the front shoulder, right? Or it's, when, it, when I say closer, I mean it's turned toward that shoulder and not towards that shoulder. Okay, if we think about that, then that means the pinch is over here. So let's go this way. Up, over. And then the chin's here. Where's the pit of that? Well, that pit of the neck is almost right below it, isn't it? They're just about on top of one another. And is the pit of the neck that far down? Probably not. But again, the gesture is not about absolute accuracy and proportion. The gesture is more about what is the doingness of the pose. Look with just a center line down, down the chest. That indicates quite a bit, doesn't it? So do you remember how we get the shoulders? We can look at the height and then we also want to look this way so we want to see what's the space from the the head vertically and the chin horizontal horizontally right and you'll get better as you do this but just take a guesstimate pit of the neck and then so we go 
boom, boom. And then you could do the same thing with the other shoulder. And even though you can't see that other shoulder, right, we know it's going to line up like that. Okay, makes sense. And again, we could, where's the eyes? The eyes would tell us that she's looking slightly up. So just put that a little bit above, above halfway. Okay, so let's move, let's move. Oh, my friend Amber, my friend Amber. She was one of my favorite models. She moved down the coast to be closer to family, so I haven't seen her in a little while. It's been a few years. But I would love it when she would come over and allow me to take some pictures. So great, so great. So, <clears throat> you guys know the routine now? Let's see if we can't go a little bit faster on this one. Where's the chin? And then this time, the head's tilting a little bit this way, isn't it? Okay. Is this chin closer to this shoulder or this shoulder? Well, it's turning slightly towards that one. So that means that's the pinch. All right. Look at the brow ridge, you know. Sometimes it's good. Exaggerate enough so that it's obvious. And you're just going to have to um, get a feel for that because I know that's a crazy statement. But you want to exaggerate it enough to where it's obvious. Like, what does that mean? Well, her head's going this way. Her shoulders are going that way, which means the chest is going this way. So instead of seeing how slight you can get that, you might want to exaggerate that a little bit. How does this line up? So that, let's go back, let's go back, sorry. I went to teaching mode, what's next, what's next, what's next, and we're gonna stick with this. So we're gonna do the chin, we're gonna do the head, we're gonna come around, and we're gonna look for the pit of the neck. The shoulders up, which means it's gonna go up from the pit of the neck. Right. Back. So something like, lots of information there, lots of information. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay, here's our, our little friend Will. Okay, so what's happening here? Well, where's the chin? Again, the center of the chin's there. We're about the center of the face. Okay, so this face is relatively straight up. Which shoulder is this chin closer to? Well, this front shoulder that's almost straight on. You know, where is it in relation? How far over? How far down? Right? Is that angle look about right? So you can try angulate. What's the horizontal distance? What's the vertical distance? Does that angle look right? Again, going from this spot to this spot, trying to find the lower spot from the top spot. Ask yourself, how far over, how far down, did I get it right? Questions, man, the right questions are the answer. The right questions are the answer. All right, so if his shoulder's about there, where's the pit of, was well, pit of the neck, they're almost right on top of one another, aren't they? 
And let's see, if that's the center, that pit of the neck is probably over here. So that's going to put that shoulder maybe over here a little bit. So the pinch is this side. There's not very much here. There's much more here on the face. Indicate the shoulder. And again, so there's like no distance there. And look, that other shoulder's disappeared too. So all we see is the body. Where's our back of the skull? So this is our bend here. Show the twist, the pull around that way. Twist around that way. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, so this is a real puzzle to stop and figure out. Now, why does this look so weird? Why does this look so weird? Can anybody see it? Are we seeing that much neck in the photo? No, we. so we got the we got the horizontal drop wrong, didn't we? That's probably up there or maybe the chin's further down here. But we've got to collapse that space. But if you just look, you can find out what's wrong and what's off. Okay, and the more you do, the better you will get. Okay, you guys doing okay? All right. So keep drawing, keep drawing, but I want to hear about it before you guys go. I want to hear about it. So she came to the studio. This was a student's uh, daughter, a musician and teacher down in Santa Barbara. And I'm sure this isn't the photo she wanted, but we're gonna use it for a gesture. We're gonna use it for a gesture. She's a wonderful musician. <clears throat> she played for us and I got to take some pictures. So, but no matter what's going on, it's still the same. It's still the same, right? Let's go back to simple. Where's the center of the chin? Okay, and then chin to the nose. Well, that's gonna show us that she's tilting up. And then how does that compare? Well, this time, instead of there being a little neck, there's more distance because there's underneath the chin. You know, the next, before we get to the neck, so everything's stretched out. And this is a little bit different, isn't it? Why? Well, where's the stretch on this one? Well, the stretch is actually here in front. Right? Being stretched. And then back here, things are getting pinched up in the back. So, and this is where things can get really tricky. But again, just think about it. And when it gets tricky like this, usually it's about overlap and getting the overlap right. Okay. So let's see what we have. Um, so are we all confused? Are we thrown off our game? No, 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 no. We're good. What's the next question? Which shoulder? Which shoulder is it closest to? Well, it's closest to this shoulder. Let's see, did we get to the pit of the neck? And that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good diagonal there. Did we get that low enough? I don't know, if not, just move it. It's not a big deal. The key to this is not to make it a big deal, right? Some of these are gonna be ugly, guys. Some of these are gonna be ugly. And don't be afraid of ugly. Don't be afraid of ugly. So what's happening there? There's the bottom of her chin. Just figure it out. And then what's that sphere doing? Well, it's 
if it's pinching back there, well, we know it's leaning this way, right? And we know it's stretching here. And we know the back. The shoulder. The shoulder. And then where's the eyes going to go? Look how much that helps describe what's going on. So let's clean this up a little bit. What do we want to show? Well, we definitely need to show... We definitely need to show the bottom plane of the egg or the bottom of the jaw, right? We want that neck stretching down to there, right? We need that neck going up like that. So what I'm doing here is trying to show you that you don't have to have all those marks, but the marks that you do have down, if we make sure they're correct, boy, you can do so much with so little. And so it's a compare, compare, relate, relate, relate. All right, that was a tough one. That was a tough one. Okay. So things were dark and moody on this day in the studio. Dark and moody. Um, <clears throat> this guy was actually here working. Um, he was here with his wife. He was uh, something with computers. I don't remember if it was software, for, you know, exactly what he did. But his wife was posing at a thing, and I had his wife out. And when I saw him, I asked, hey, would you do come to and so we had them both out at the studio modeling so that was really cool genuine Italians right just over here working so that was fun that was fun but whether they're Italian Chinese American Asian it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what do we ask where's the center of the chin where's the center of the chin Okay, how's this face going? Well, pretty much like that. Which shoulder are we closer to? Well, we're closer to the front one. So let's take a spin around his head and let's go towards the pinch, around. Try to capture the stretch. And now I want to show you guys something. Here's We've done a few of these, so let me show you a little trick. Right? It's real important to see, okay, the neck is going like this, and then the rib cage is, is coming out like this. Right? So there's the side of the rib cage. If we're thinking about a box. Boom. Look at the bottom of the neck here. I can show all that information about the rib cage just by finishing this in a direction. If I treat that, the finish, the pit of the neck is where the neck takes off and also where the rib cage starts or ends. So how far around is this guy turned? Well, not a lot, but a little. But again, that much of the line isn't even necessary. So, in other words, we took all of that information 
and gave it to the viewer with that mark. Okay, again, this is the key to all of this is simply how simple yet descriptive can we make it? How are we doing? We got about two and a half more minutes. You guys can hold on two and a half more minutes. So we're going to come down. Where's the pit in the neck in relationship to the neck? No, let's just maybe even for a little more drama, put it over here. Like that. So if we look here, where's that back shoulder? Well, it's pretty close. It's pretty close. It's below. When we look here, where's this other shoulder? Well, it's out here quite a bit of ways. So we'll get something like that. Oh, that's a little bit. And then that's going to be more drastic right there. You guys got it? You guys got it? Now, again, if we work across, look how I can put that entire body in just by working across. I can show, show you these shoulders by working across. I can show you where he's looking by working across. Okay, so a ton of information. All right, we've got one minute. So here will be our challenge. Oops, that was a wrong button. There's a right button. So we got the timer on one minute, minute, and there we go. Oh, here, this is one of Izzy's uh, schoolmates' older sisters when she was younger. So we got to take them out and get some photographs. So this is a little different angle. Let's see here. The center of the chin, the tilt, which shoulder's closer? So let's go there. We are seeing under the chin, right? So we're seeing a little bit underneath. We're gonna go for the pinch. Go around to the back of the head. From the middle of the chin, where is the pit of the neck? It's a little bit over here, isn't it? So that's our landing. Where's the shoulder? Where's the other shoulder? Ah, and there's our timer. And there's our timer. Okay, good job, guys. Good job. So, why get set up um, for the critiques? I'd like you guys to relax a minute if you're drawing. I know that can be pretty intense. Um, but settle down and let me know what you thought. Easy peasy, going too slow. Oh my gosh, that was harder than I thought. Where do you fall on that? Where do you fall on that? Okay, so for this, we're going to come back to here. And I'm going to set a new scenario up on the iPad here. Okay. Take a little break myself. Were any of you guys able to follow along and sketch some of those? <laughs> uh, all right. All right. Well, Susan was at it. Susan was at it. I know. After thinking like that, it's hard to even think in words, isn't it? Isn't it? We got a yes sketched, but uh, nothing else, Wendy. Not a, oh, easy peasy. We got it. All right, we'll give you guys a few days to get warmed up, but tomorrow morning and Thursday morning, we're gonna do that. And if you can't make the live, try to catch the recording. It, this is invaluable, guys. It's sometimes kind of tough to get into these new things, but this is invaluable. So please, please do it. Uh, perfect. Wendy says she was fooled by some, got some. 
that's exactly what you want to do. And you realized you were fooled by some. And that's when the learning happens. Good. Good, good, good. Okay, let's uh, share some screen here. And uh, Sue is nice enough to get right on this and get me a couple things in from our assignment. Let's see, and do we have this little fellow here? I think she sent a few of them. And let's see, so I'm gonna pretend, and Sue, I apologize if this is wrong, but I'm gonna pretend that this is the, the one we're looking at while we work on this. Okay, so let's talk. Make sure you guys can see what I'm doing here. Let's talk like the sketch to begin with. So we've got that shoulders closer. This shoulders further back. This shoulders higher. That shoulders lower. Right? We've got the chin. And we don't see the pit of the neck, but we know it's over here. I'll talk about all those clues later. Um, th there's a lot, and a lot of this is just experience. I think we want to go here, right? And so then that would give us the bottom of this chin going that way. So make sure with the bottom of the chin, you know, even if it's not there, I get a nice straight line, right? for that information to, to say, look, this is the direction of the head. And then from there, I know I've got to get to there and to there because that's just how faces work. Symmetry, symmetry, that word, it took me years to understand what that word means and the power, the power, the power, the conceptual power of symmetry. So it's because of symmetry that with that one center mark, we know this. Okay, so up and around, up and around we go. And then, let's see, yep, there's the stretch there. And then the pinch over here, well, it's twisting this way, right? But the pinch is a little bit more open, right? But the other side is going to be even more open. So sometimes you've got to look out. It's all more or less. Sometimes there's this on one side and then that on the other side. Practice visually. See if it doesn't look better and feel better if you do that. Okay? Again, th there's nothing here to copy because dark marks on paper, even light marks on paper, can never create a child, can never create a human being, can never create an apple we can eat, a flower we can smell, right? A pup we can pet. It can only do what it can do, so it is a translation. All right, what in the world do we got here other than a big mess? So we got our line. We decided we're going to tilt it a little bit more. And then look, with the idea of parentheses, once I have this, I can decide where I want the top of the head. And then that'll help me get from here to here. And then once I'm at the top of the head, I need to see where the pit of the neck is in relationship to the center of the... We're gonna go there. This is pretty close. That's looking pretty good. Now, the eyes will have to go perpendicular. So we want to get those eyes going a little bit more like that. Um, not the eye the eye sockets, the structure. When I say the eyes, I'm almost thinking brow ridge, that whole structure right there, not the eyeballs. 
And then that tells us that the back of the head is going to be down here. So we can go up and and then we want to make a definite change for his shoulder. Come across from the back of the head. Okay. So I hope I again this is this is tricky and these little angles they can seem impossible for a while until you understand the relationship. Okay? So I want to pause just for a second here and let's talk about once I get an angle here it does not matter whether it's the chin or the nose or the brow ridge. Once I have any one of those, I have all three of them. Okay, because never, never running out of color here. What are we going to do? Never will the chin be this the nose be that, and then the eye be that. You know, not unless they're making a funny face, right? If they're a little bit off, they may be a little bit off, but again, if you have any one of those, you have all three. If you have this side, you have this side. If you have this, you have that. But the problem gets to where you're trying to do this and this is all you're looking at. But if you back up your vision for a wider view and you look at this with the bot with the other pieces, then it's easier. Okay? So I hope that helps. I hope that helps because the key to all of this There's a little bit of material of this color makes this color. This is the process. Getting used to it, a little technique. But most of it's knowing how to see simply. How to see simply. Okay, so something like that. Then I think Sue gave us more of the four value compositional study. So let's look at this for a second. So that was the gesture study. And then what I want to do here is let me go ahead and set up four values I can work from. Let's get our value number four. Yeah, so we, we talked yesterday, putting yourself in the position of the model really helps. It, to understand it. So I was talking, I was in a class, one of my life drawing classes, we weren't allowed to start drawing until we took the models, put ourselves in the position the model was in. So that our body was in that position and we could see what shoulders, what, what twist, what stretches. Yeah. Yeah, Jenny, that's a good tip. Yeah, keep that one. It's a, it's a good one. It's a good one. So we got number four down here. Let's get number three. See, sometimes it's hard picking up these colors. Let's do number three there. Call that our gray. We get the tone of the paper. Okay, so these are kind of swatches I use and I can go back, it'll save some time. And then where's some white here? There's a good white. Get a patch of white down here. All right, so my shapes may not be super accurate because of time, okay? But I think we'll be able to get this. Let's see, you guys are seeing all of that. Was Ethan up there the whole time? Ethan, you've been hanging out there the whole time? All right, well, anyway. Anyway, so we're gonna get our dark. So we got the tilt of the head. 
So sh you got the tilt on this one better. And that's the other thing is the more you do this, the more accurately you'll see it. And that's one of the reasons we want to do this so many times. Not because I'm going to punish you or trying to make you strong enough to take it. But so that you start to see it and understand it and you get better. You get better, better, better. So let's come under there. Then this mask will come under. And then we're going to show the underplane of the nose on the mask. Then we're going to, the mask is just going to wrap around the thing as a whole. It's not going to really show the lips or anything like that. We want the side of the mask coming down the nose. So we want that definite shape going across the face. And then, so this side thing depends if we're seeing the bottom or the top of them. Since we're seeing the bottom, then that, that's got to turn down. Okay, now that's going to merge with the shadow of the nose, the dark of the brow, the shadow of the eye socket, and the dark of the eye. Okay, over here again, we're going to have our shadow, the dark of the eye. Right. the eyebrow and then this these glasses again the glasses have to go down the side of the glasses have to go down not up because we see the bottom of his chin And then let those glasses tell you about this side of the nose. Okay, and then yeah, the cast shadow from there is good. We've got the hair, and he's got some styling hair. Let me tell you, that kid can style, so make sure you get that hair. Don't upset the kid. Don't upset him. All right, he's a good-looking kid. We don't want to make him any uglier. All right, nice and solid there. And then over here, it's gonna be very important. I may need to cut a little bit, and especially since I'm so close. We'll see how the drawing is, but listen to what I'm saying and what I'm looking for. Okay, we're gonna show the hat coming into, let's see, I'm trying to get over here far enough. So I think we need to cut in a little bit. See if I can do all of this at once. I don't know. And then we've got the ear. Where's the ear? The ear's below the below the eye because we see the bottom of the chin. So come out for the ear. The shape of the ear comes in to the jaw. We've got to show a difference to the neck and then down to so I'm with that one silhouette, it doesn't seem like much, but look how effective it is when we're descriptive. Okay, and then the same thing could go for, let's back this up a little bit. The same thing could go for the hoodie. Leave some rule, you know, we don't have to Do it. That's the direction we have to go to, but we can ride the rolls of that hoodie all the way there. So even though we, we got to have that angle, we also want to try to describe what's on there. And I know that's a level up. We want to show the tube, the tube of that happening, right? That open, and then again, show the fabric coming down. Background is background, and that's a number three value. Okay. 
How are we doing on time? I'm getting lost here, so. And then look, with the number four value, I can show this hoodie is wrapping around, right? With that same number four value. Make that hat one. Okay, I wanna carry this one a little bit further because I wanna show you how strong this can get. And I know the whole, or most of the class is gonna be doing this, so. Okay, let's go for our number two value. So what we're gonna do with this black here, oh, hold on, I gotta show you the number two. So if we can get a clean value in here, here and then we got a nice band on that hat make sure we get that okay and then what I'm gonna do for the mask is it still gonna be a dark but I'm just gonna take it slightly lighter slightly lighter and again it's gonna fall over this side is that light enough maybe slightly lighter Right. I still want it to read as that with that dark value, but we can make it slightly lighter. And again, describe describe it going across the planes of that face. Okay, let that pool. Okay, we've got one more value. And I would do something like that again, maybe even a little bit lighter, but for the gray of this shirt. Because we don't really wanna be looking at this sweatshirt. So instead of making it white, I would probably make it something like that. And when we do that, do you guys see how even with that, before we got to any white at all, where are we focusing? You know, if, especially if we cover up those down there. And then with the white, don't overdo it. You know, less can be more. Less can be more. Okay, so let's see here. Let's see what we got. <laughs> so for the you guys that have been around since uh, last month's class, yeah, some windshield wipers. Some windshield wipers would be good on this kid. That's hilarious. That's hilarious, Jenny. Hey, are you dedicated to art or what? You can eat later. Art first, art first. I'm kidding, Claudia. I'm glad you got groceries. Now I'm hungry. Across the plains, that's so helpful. Yeah, we always wanna see as simple but as descriptive as we can be. As simple and as descriptive as we can be. And that's where the poetry, that's where the art comes from. All right, Sue, you're doing great. Thank you for submitting those. I hope that helped a ton. And uh, your work is just coming up so much. It's so exquisite. So thank you. Again, Sue's another artist who, 
had a whole nother thing going and a whole nother style. And she was very good at what she did. But she was willing to set that aside rather than try to jam it into this style. And so now not only does she have her old style that she can paint in and all of those things, but now she has a, a different way to think and to paint and to operate. So sometimes once we have one style or, or one way of painting, we try to force that across all ways and realize there's different approaches. And sometimes it's not that one's right or wrong, but it's like you've got to pick one. You know, you can't go up the west face and the east face of the mountain on the same day, not unless it's a small mountain. You know, one's one trip, the other's the other trip. So, Sue, thank you for that. Thank you for your hard work and great job. Great, great job. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I don't think Ethan's going to help us out on this next one. I don't think there's got any help at all for this next one. Because we are so far past windshield wipers now on dogs riding motorcycles with scarves on. We've got elephants juggling. <laughs> I want to say trout. I don't, why do I want to say trout? I don't know what. Just the juggling fish. Why balancing looks like a, a child, a youngster, who's playing with a... I don't know my birds. Is that an egret? But man, do we got some stuff going on here. So much fun. So much fun. So, <clears throat> Susan, I get the feeling that this may be an actual painting you really want to work out. I, that seems to kind of be your personality. I know you're being playful here. But let's talk about some things and let's talk about this like, man, we, I want this to be a $100,000 painting. We just want it to be spectacular. And because you are who you are, I'm going to be pushing and talking about some concepts I might not have talked about before. Okay, and, and that's, it'll be something that takes this to another level. To another level. Yes, I want to, of course you want to paint it. Look at that. Man, I never saw a comment get up so quick. Yes, I want to paint it. All right. So for a little plug here, um, this month we're doing head, neck, and shoulders in our painting class. Next month is going to be finish what we've started. Most of us have tons of things we haven't finished. So we're going to take the month and help you out. So this month is a good time to get caught up on that or get going on something like Susan is here that she might want to work on next month. Because if you've been oil painting for a little while, you know it's not, it takes a little while. Got to let some things dry and set up. So give, your, give yourselves a head start. Okay, back to the elephants. Elephants, juggling trout. And my timer says I have seven minutes. I, I, may, I may sneak over a little bit today. I'll, I'll do my best. The main thing I want to talk about here, Susan, and this is a little bit off topic, but the idea of balance. The idea of balance and we can talk about both aesthetic but also physical balance. If you're going to do figure drawing or animals or anything in that realm, I mean, even still lives, you, you got to have it. But much more so in these activities, there's got to be a sense of balance, meaning... Right, where's the fulcrum point on this? With this straight line, that feels to put the fulcrum point right here. And if that was the case, there's no way this stuff wouldn't come crashing down. Because every force, there's an equal opposite force, something like that, right? We've got all of this going on on this side of the fulcrum point, the balance point, whatever you want to talk about there but on this side what's happening well there's nothing so that's that balance we're talking about now now we're tricky here because we were just looking at the bottom elephant weren't we but if we extend this to 
all of the weight that's onto here, well, this nothing is not an accurate read. Because now all of this weight is also contributing to that fulcrum, right? But it's pushing down on this side. And so all of that, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. I got nervous about the time and I forgot to layer up. So let's just press some buttons here. Let's just press a couple buttons and layer up and be on our way. So with that said, I just don't think there's enough room for that balance. So when you go to do this, again, I wouldn't redraw this whole thing right now unless you're going to do another study. I would get this weight a little bit further. So what might that mean? Well, it might mean that they've got to be tilted back a little more. Right? And so that we move this a little bit more like that too. Okay. Again, I know that's real. This is high order stuff and this is the first time I'm approaching it. Um, but I'm not making this up. I mean, this is something the figure people have used for years and years and years. Okay, so that's just one like really hardcore thing. But again, it'll make all the difference in the world. So think about that fulcrum and balancing that weight. Again, I, I think you're on the right idea, but just the slightest movement will make the biggest change. Okay, and then as we do this, forget about what you're seeing, but how can you show me the roundness of this? How can you show me the roundness of this? This is a big elephant. Right? Elephants are the big things, you know, really. And you do that with the values. Now, sometimes when we're trying to draw and create these, it gets hard. But once you have this, now we've got to translate it into our number one, two, three, four. Okay. And. Susan and I are friends, so, I, you know, I don't want to be. I would never let you tell me that's a cylinder in space that's lit. Okay. Um, and I, I think I see what the problem is. Or well, not the problem. Well, it is a problem. But problems are no big deals, right? Because there's plenty of solutions. Is it looks like you, you want to have the light shining like directly on them, like they're face lit. And we can do that, and maybe we just have to do a little bit more. It's just be constant with that shadow. There's got to be that little bit of shadow. We've got to be constant. So, I might reconsider just a complete fate. You know, even if you were to move the light like up above and then this would shadow more, right? Or, or what if we just moved it over here a little bit, then that end would shadow more. But one of the reasons I always have the light, I, and it, again, this isn't me. <laughs> Rembrandt was, fit, was onto this a long time before I ever came along. But... The, sh the light from here sets up these shadows so that we can read very clearly. Okay? All right. So let's think about that. Think about setting up your light shadow pattern so that these forms can be clear. And I know you mentioned not sure about the landscape either. We can talk about that. I think before we worry too much about that, I would do some loose sketches trying to get the rhythm a little bit more, and then also trying to find a lighting situation that's gonna be more descriptive. And maybe all that is, Susan, 
is finding a background color or value. Let's see, that would be a light color. So that would be a bad choice there. But that just clearly, clearly separates. Because one thing that happens is if there's so little shadow, you've got to make sure that it's felt, right? And if something is face lit, you know, by definition, there's very little shadow in that. And then we've got to make sure that our gray elephant, and this is also going to be the, look, this is going to go a little pink. You think Claudia's going to be beside herself? I bet she will be that the, the gray elephant is still brighter than the background. And then what you want to do is be a little more um, maybe discerning with exactly where this white goes. Because a little is very effective, a, a lot, and it just totally loses its punch. Right, just so, yeah, and I, I see what you're doing. We need to indicate some, but how lit, you know, how much do we really need? Okay, so we're a couple minutes over time, but let's think about that. And uh, Susan, if you got questions, let me know. Let's continue to work on this because I think this could be a great lesson for everybody. Along with rhythm and balance and the stretch and the pinch. I can't help myself. I can't help myself. So the stretch is this side. So you've done good showing the pinch on this side. Excellent, you know. So just keep that up everywhere. And make sure, like even these little forms, they've got to be full. Even if they look flat, make them full. Don't ever on an, do that on an animal or a human because it, it makes them fake immediately. Always make sure, right, that they're full. Or, you know, if it's a starving or something, they, it can be hollow, but don't make it a straight. Yeah, look, we've, we've got great pinches right here with a great stretch right there. Great pinch, great pinch. Good, Susan, and then the pinch comes over here, stretch. So when that pinch and stretch changes sides, that happens. But that's a lesson for another day, a lesson for another day. Okay, let's see. <laughs> I told you. Claudia was going to be on this. I told you Claudia was going to be on this. Let's see. <laughs> children's book. So Janie's got you writing a children's book. Excellent. I like it. And Claudia wants to see the painting too. These are the things I need to see. Okay. I'm glad you, you know, it can be, it can be tough taking criticism like I just gave Susan. Because, man, there, there's some high-level stuff she's working on. But, you know, if you're really trying to move forward, you go, okay, I'm here. What am I? So much of this is how do we become aware of what we're unaware of? And as I see my job here to help you develop as an artist, is can I shine some lights on some places where there might not be awareness? Yeah, she's having trouble getting the subtle values with charcoal. And that's okay. You'll get better as you do it. You get better as you do it. Pink elephant. <laughs> Claudia was all over it. All right, guys. Thank you. There's Tom. Tom, Tom, Tom. If you can't get into school, buddy, let us know. We want you there. All right? We, we missed you yesterday. We missed you. We missed you. We missed you. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. Yes, love to everybody. We got such a great group here. And this is how we learn. Yeah. All right, so glad you guys could be with me. 
We'll be back tonight for Sketch Club and tomorrow morning for another morning jump start. Bring your sketchbook for those gesture exercises. And uh, if you're able to do a few of these, get them turned in and we'll look at them on um, after our exercises tomorrow morning. Bye everybody. Yeah, we miss you, Tom. We miss you. So let us know how you're doing. I'll reach out a little later or uh, Cindy will. All right. Bye. Speaking of Cindy, look, she's always there. Have a good one, everybody.